Give me a big smile there, ladies. We're all smiling. That is my look.
There's currently safe just here. See, safe. You need to go there. Hang on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all right. <laughs> 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 you see all the two tickets coming in? Hello, Adrian. How are you? How are you? Congrats. <laughs> are you okay? We are, yeah. Are you well? Sorry, I'm going to talk to Mossy there for the rain ticket. Ten minutes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Derek Brawley, CEO of City of Limerick BEC, and the Limerick City uh, Services to Sports Award Committee have invited me to be your MC for the night. And I, I appreciate that invitation, and I think it uh, reinforces the continuing link between the sporting organisations and the City of Limerick BEC. So you're all very welcome here tonight to this, the 23rd uh, annual Sports Award. Uh, for some of you who have been here uh, attended before, you will, we're in a different venue. For years, as far as back as I can remember, we were in uh, the Jury's, Jury's Hotel. And uh, Jury's is now gone, but it's an ill wind because we're delighted to be here in Perry's Hotel. It has enabled us to, in, uh, to uh, provide for a much bigger crowd. I think Perry said that if we can cater for an extra 50. And this is one of the uh, events each year for which there is a huge demand for tickets. And I think it reflects as well the value that people put on, the contribution that people make 
to sports, to participating in sports, to supporting sports, local communities around the city. I think uh, it has been very popular and I would like to congratulate all of the people who will be award winners tonight, all of the people who have supported them and who have prepared citations, and all of the people in the various sporting organisations. Congratulations. So I'd like to welcome our guests here tonight. First of all, our guest of honour, Mr Ronnie Delaney. I'll have more to say in a minute. From the Limerick City Sports Partnership, we have Mr. Dave Mahidi, who is Chairman of the Sports Partnership. <laughs> Mr. John McElhenney and Miss Yvonne McMahon uh, from the Sports Partnership, and Mr. Paul Carey, Treasurer of the Sports Partnership. Miss Elaine O'Connor, the Chief Executive of the Sports Partnership, unfor unfortunately can't be with us uh, here this evening. Now, uh, associated with the Jerry Burke Special Awards, we have Mrs. Anne Burke and her son, Kevin Burke. Welcome. <laughs> the special guest this year is Mrs. Anna O'Brien, widow of the late Tim O'Brien, uh, that beloved Limerick man, and their children, uh, Kieran, Neil, and Aileen O'Brien. Very welcome to see you. <laughs> And old friends of the Sports Awards, John and Kathleen McCluskey, we're delighted that you came again this year. Uh, the Jim Upton Award, unfortunately, uh, Jim can't be with us here tonight, but he is celebrating being a grandfather for the first time. His uh, daughter has had a baby and they're in Belfast. Uh, so then the, the Limerick Sports Award uh, Committee Mr. Mossy Water Chairman, Mr. Paddy O'Connor Secretary, and Ms. Mary Castle Coordinator. Uh, each year they have made this, uh, this uh, event uh, um, very successful. Uh, for the Paul Partnership this year, a special sponsor, uh, the Paul Partnership, have given a special uh, grant to the service, to the Limerick Services Sports uh, Award Committee, and we thank them very much. And I believe Mary Shannon is here. Um, from uh, the media, our constant supporters throughout the year, we have Mr. Leonard Burke, Head of Sport plus Sports Team from Live 95 FM. From, <laughs> from the Limerick Leader, we have Mr. Aidan Carr, Acting Head of Sport. Uh, and from the Limerick Post, Mr. Niall Cantrell, Head of Sport. <laughs> you will notice this evening that uh, the whole event is being videoed by Star Video. And we we'll say a special word of thanks to uh, John McElhenney, who I has uh, from Chorus, who has uh, arranged this this evening. And I understand that it will be broadcast. Uh, on the sports, on the course sports channel in the near future. Isn't that right, John? Next week. Uh, special thanks, John, for making this possible. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we will be brief tonight. Um, first of all, uh, John, a few words from uh, some of our guests. And the first is our special guest of honour, Mr. Ronnie, Mr. Ronnie Delaney, who has <laughs> Ronnie is an old friend of the Sports Awards. He has been coming here since 1979, when he first came to speak at a seminar on the sport for all back in 1979, and shared the speaker's desk with Lord John Raven and Noel Drumgoole, who was GA representative on COP4 at that time. He came for the next few years to get uh, the 10K Sports Award going, the Sports Directory, and so on. And in 1983, this was the first of the Sports Awards, and he came here as a special guest that time. 
but we're particularly glad. He's come almost almost every year since. Last year we missed him for he, he couldn't come for personal reasons. But this year is special because some people here I think might remember Melbourne 1956. Yeah, yeah. That was the year. This, of course, 2006, is the 50th anniversary. And uh, when uh, of the time... <laughs> the time of uh, Ronnie running into the history books and uh, bringing honour to himself and his family and to, the, to Ireland. So, uh, but last year, there was a special award uh, for Ronnie as well when he was made a freedom of free man of Dublin. Uh, we're very glad, we're very glad, Ronnie, in this special year of the 50th anniversary to welcome you to say a few words to Thank us. Thank you very much. Chairman Mossy, dear to thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, I got my warning, she said, we'd be brief tonight, so I'm, obvi I'm obviously to, to be brief. Uh, the other thing is, if I'd known she was going to talk for so long, I wouldn't have stood up. At my age, I, at my age, I shouldn't be standing that long. But uh, anyway, as you can see, I must have been a child genius who won the Olympics. Uh, uh, but on, uh, on a more formal note, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm especially delighted because of the friendships I've enjoyed over the years. And if I don't want to single out the people who are here tonight, but I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention the O'Brien and the Burke families who very bravely are joining us tonight. So it's my pleasure to have met you here this evening and thank you for your presence, which adds greatly to the occasion. I've always had an affection for Limerick. Uh, my, my wife is from Limerick, and so she told me to say that. <laughs> uh, she's very beautiful, like all you Limerick ladies. So I've had this affection, but deeper down, uh, when I won the Olympics, in those days it was very different. We win the Olympics, and I was at college in America, and I couldn't come home immediately because I had to go back to college, even though the Olympics were held at the beginning of December. But I arrived back in Ireland for the celebration of my victory. And in those days, properly, you couldn't land at Dublin. Uh, you, you had to land at Shannon. So the Shannon uh, lobby, I was totally supportive of all this year. So <laughs> instead of landing at Dublin, there wasn't a runway big enough, you landed at Shannon. And my first honor in Ireland, having competed in the Olympics, was by Senator Russell, who was then Lord Mayor of Limerick, and he only recently passed on to his eternal reward. And it, my sense of uh, gratitude, of appropriateness, of immodestly, if I might say, the immensity of my achievement, to be honored by Limerick City shortly after getting off the plane at three or four in the morning, has indelibly stuck in my mind. I can picture myself in the city hall. I can sitting there in this huge big. I can remember the words of Senator Russell. But I, most of all, I can remember the fact that this was my first warm welcome back to the country that I love, the country of Ireland, the country that I'm fortunate enough to represent in the Olympics. But tonight is about sport and the gift of sport. And what is here tonight exemplifies that gift because the rhetoric of sport is it's good for it's this and it's that and other, other things. But the real value of sport is that it brings us together. It unites us. It makes us think about ourselves, the quality of our lives. It makes us think about our children and the examples and the role models and everything else we want to give them. And it, so therefore, sport is very special to each one of our lives. And the real gift of it is that 
we assemble together. And with the New Paul partnership coming on board, and again, Deirdre, I'd like to join with you in complimenting all, all these sponsors. What better area of the world is there than sport for partnership? It's an extraordinary example. It, it, the people we're going to be honoring later tonight, they exemplify what partnership in sport is. They're the people who do the work behind the scenes. They're not the medal winners, but they are the supporters, the directors, the mentors. So I compliment the Paul partnership and all the other generous sponsors who are here tonight. And finally, if I might compliment the media. The media are central to what we're about. We're trying to promote the concept of better life, better of activity, the antidote to useless activity. We're trying to promote positive activity. And that's why our award winners tonight have contributed so personally and so generously and so voluntarily to earn their recognitions. But the media are central to it as well. And having the representatives of radio, the Limerick leader, having the representatives of chorus, and the fact that chorus is recording this. Oh, I must remind myself, I must smile. I'm on television. <laughs> uh, but it, it, isn't it marvelous? So it's a marvelous night. Deirdre, I hope I haven't gone on too long. I'm just going to say to my friends, on the committee, Mary especially, uh, and to your colleagues on the committee, thank you for inviting me again. I'm always thrilled to come back, and I look forward to congratulating personally each of the award winners, and I congratulate you, the audience, for being here in such large numbers and being supportive of this great evening. Let's keep these awards going. They're terribly important to central to promotion of sport. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ronnie, for being such a wonderful role model for 50 years. And uh, next, the Limerick Sports Partnership is now four years in operation. It has made such a wonderful contribution in that short time to the sporting life of Limerick in bringing together the various partners to contribute and give that added value that, uh, that partnership can achieve. Dave Mahidi is chairman of the Limerick Sports Partnership. And he is also director of uh, the University of Limerick Sports Arena. Dave, I'd like to ask you to say a few words. Thank you very much, um, distinguished guests, uh, CEO, Chairperson, P. O'Brien. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you very much. Um, I have till half eleven, isn't it? <laughs> I have a book here that I have to read, and I want people to take notes, and I'll ask them questions afterwards. But <clears throat> how many people were in Thomond Park last week? Those lucky enough to get tickets. Bass oh, sorry. But we all took delight in what we saw in Thomond Park. But where did those players learn their first skill, their first tackle, their first bit of training. It wasn't with Declan Kidney. It wasn't with the staff that are with Munster. It was with you. It was with you, the people who give them that start. So those star players that go on and play for Ireland had to start somewhere. And they started in your hands. And you give your time voluntary. And we have to commend that and say, this is, this is the heartbeat of sport in Limerick. Now, during the week, I do occasionally read books. Um, this book came in, it's, a, it's a, an English publication. And last year was the year of the volunteer, and that's what they talk about people. And I'll just read one paragraph from it. Sport England has launched a new publication highlighting the contribution of volunteers to community sport. Sports 
volunteers are the heart of our community. They claim that there are nearly six million volunteers in England, and this is where we put a value on it that Ronnie talked about, that contribute 1.2 billion hours and that's valued at 14 million pounds sterling per year. Now, I can see you taking out your calculators and saying, what's that? So I did it for you. What they've done is averaged 200 hours a year, is what an average volunteer, that's four hours a week. Now you can smile and say, my God, four hours a week, I do that a night. And they value that at so much per, per hour. So our average, is 5,000 euros per year is what a volunteer gives. And that's only a volunteer that gives four hours. So can you imagine the value in this room of contribution? It isn't millions, it's billions. And that's the sort of contribution that you make, concrete contribution that's set out in stone and sometimes we don't realize. So we take our hats off to, to you. We call ourselves the sporting capital of Ireland. We are the sporting capital of Ireland. Sorry, Ronnie. <laughs> we certainly showed that last, last weekend. But if we are the sporting capital of Ireland, you are the sporting heartbeat. Because without a heartbeat, we are going nowhere. And all my job is to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of the heart of the sports partnership, but above all, from the bottom of the heart of sports people in Limerick. The contribu contribution you make is immense, it is incredible. And there's one plea, let's keep it going. Thank you. have a stage behind us this year. So we'll be asking people when they receive their reward to go back and take their seat. So, um, um, uh, the, the arrangement is that uh, the, for each uh, sporting area, uh, there is a nominee and there is a person who reads the citation. So, the first award is for the Walking Association, and uh, the nominee is uh, Miss Liz Carney. <laughs> and to read the citation is Mr. Paul O'Connor. Chairman, honoured guests, award recipients, ladies and gentlemen. These awards are about the unsung heroes of sport. Liz Kearney, our first recipient tonight, is the epitome of what the judges look for in se selecting the award winners. As everyone here knows, in all clubs and organisations, there are high profile personalities, well known people fronting the organisation. But behind the scenes, there is always a pivotal person without whom the club would be in grave difficulty. In Limerick Walking Association, Liz Carney, 12 years on the committee of the club and 10 years as its treasurer, is that pivotal person. With over 400 members in the walking club, they hold three to four walks each week and also one monthly Sunday brunch long walk, two walking weekends in Irish beauty spots, an annual two-week overseas walking holiday, and in addition, there are several social events held throughout the year, including the club annual dinner dance, the Christmas party, members' day walks, quiz nights, 45 drives, and charity walks. Liz is always to the forefront in organizing these events, 
buying the prizes, collecting entry money, processing booking forms, contacting hotels, and settling all the bills. And apart from handling the normal finances of the club, she looks after the Saturday weekly draw, walk draw in which there is over, uh, in which there is one prize for every 10 walkers, uh, which necessitates what is buying over 20 different prizes every week. She also supervises the teas and sandwiches and refreshments served at the Saturday walks. And the total turnover of the club is about 400,000 a year, a big undertaking for a volunteer. But not content with this workload, she organises an annual New Year walking weekend each year in West Clare for charity, which has to date, over 10 years, raised 20,000 for needy Limerick charities. Despite being involved in so many aspects of Limerick Walking Association, she's very shy and is always underestimating the importance of her heavy workload. Now, if you attended the AGM of Limerick Walking Club when she presents her financial accounts every year, she comes in shaking like a leaf. And the reason is she hates the idea of somebody questioning her accounts and asking questions, impertinent questions. But Liz's accounts are actually impeccable, so Liz, you need never worry, nobody's going to question them. Liz Carney is that special person who has, in her own quiet way, served her members so well for the last 12 years, and for her service to leisure walking, is a very deserving recipient of this award. Ladies and gentlemen, Liz Carney. Now the next sporting area is athletics and the award recipient is Mary Carton. <laughs> and Mossy Wolf will read the citation. Guests, uh, recipients, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Mary Corton, coach and registrar of St Mary's Athletic Club in Night Keel. Mary began in athletics in Night Keel when her two daughters got involved, and later on her sons became involved, and she has remained involved in the club since then to this present day. She took over as coach. And I'm glad to say that when I retired, she took over as coach. And that's some time ago, and it's quite a long time for any lady to be able to give so much time because as a housewife, a mother, and a full-time career worker, it's very hard to find time to give to training children in the evening, which Mary does. She's also a greyhound trainer and is very involved in horses. So she, in the morning time, she takes time out to train her greyhounds. In the evening, she takes the children. Now, I think she's reasonably successful with her greyhounds, so I think she took the skills for coaching from the children in the evening to coaching the greyhounds in the morning. And what she says to them, I don't know. But she, she's also involved in horse racing with her husband, Tom. And during the day, she helps her husband out in the local practice. And it's very hard in this day and age with so many restrictions attached to adults being involved with children. And it's a brave person who will take it on. But fair play to Mary and the other members of the, the club, they have done so. She's been also a registrar of the club and she has increased the membership over the years. She has also been a founder member of the Butterfly Club in Red Keel, which is a club that has been set up in the wake of the Special Olympics to help families with children with a learning disability and 
They provide assistance on a Saturday when they take the children to give the parents time off. So you can see by the citation that Mary has a full schedule on her hands and I honestly believe that she's one of the very few recipients who we could say is a most deserving recipient of the Service to Sports Awards. Thank you very much. award winner there. His name is Michael Cusack. <laughs> and uh, Breda Dedigan is on her way up here to read the citation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, chairman, honoured guests. It's indeed a great privilege and pleasure to read this citation for Michael Cusack. Had I known I was going to be on chorus, I would have gone into spec saves and got contact lenses. <laughs> May God forgive you, Mary Costello. However, <laughs> well, well, thank you. I was hoping someone would say that. Anyway, the, the wonderful thing about being a member of the sports advisory body is that we're able to sit with the recipients and friends and family, and indeed it gives us a true flavour of the people receiving the awards this evening. So whilst I will certainly read the citation, I was absolutely delighted to talk to Michael's lovely wife Catherine, his sister-in-law Maraid, and his niece Christina, because um, they gave me a little flavour. When I met Michael this evening, I thought, what a lovely guy, and certainly very deserving. And then they started telling me things like, you know, um, outside of the cycling, he has this mannequin at home that he dresses up. And I just didn't know where this was going, but I was getting severely worried. But apparently, this is dressed up and put at the gate, and everyone going past waves at it. I'm, I'm really not sure where to go with that one. And then they were telling me that he loves joking and messing and winding people up. And that, I think it was Sister Vera, misfortune, he hid in a wheelie bin one night and jumped out at her. <laughs> I'm not really sure why he's getting this award after all of this. However, on a more serious note, for service to the sport of cycling, and in particular Limerick Cycling Club, Michael Cusack is being honoured with the Sports Service Award. Michael, uh, Mike, as he is affectionately known, has been a member of Limerick Cycling Club since he was in school and is still one of the core members. His contribution to cycling in Limerick is second to none. He has established friendships locally and abroad, and his passion for the sport is always evident in his conversation. Mike has raced for many years in the domestic front throughout Ireland, but is an all-rounder. He commits much of his personal time to the sport and is always at the thick of organised organising Rush Limony, which is seen by other clubs as the best in the country. Indeed, among his many achievements was winning the Crotty Cup in 1984. For 10 years, Mike ran a charity race on St. Stephen's Day. This is known as the John Ryan Memorial and is a treat for all local cyclists. The proceeds from this event are given to the old folks' home in Fedmore, and this is known as Mike's Race. During the year, even if Mike does not race himself, you will find him at many races, his aim being to support local riders, but also to do what he loves, cycling. Mike is one of these people who is behind the scenes in preparation for races. He is the person who spends the day before a race marking the road for safety. He is the person buzzing around on the day itself, and he will attend all club meetings, and his passion is to help out the sport in any fashion possible. Mike could not genuinely think of one reason why he was being presented with this award, but we know his colleagues and family and friends in Limerick Cycling Club and beyond can give countless reasons. Above all, from talking to everyone this evening, Mike is a true gentleman, genuinely surprised and shocked. shocked that he is receiving this award. Indeed, he said to Mary, I hope this isn't a wind-up because my wife is sitting next to me and she's six months pregnant. She's still with us this evening and looking very well. Mike's incredible passion for racing is why the club believe it is not just his cycling achievements 
that he is receiving this award for, but above all his help and support, when he himself was not cycling without any glory, taking his own holidays to support the other cyclists. I know that he is delighted that Brian McMahon could be here with him with the other club members this evening to lend his support. I'm delighted that you could be with us, Brian. Above, for all of these, his passion, his commitment, and for his enjoyment of the sport, I'm sure you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Cusack is indeed a worthy recipient of our award this evening. Schoolboy soccer is the next sporting area and the uh, award winner in that cat for that sport is Bart Dillon. <laughs> and uh, Gary, Jerry Moore, IRFU, will read the citation. Thank you. I always seem to get the job of following the one that does all the talking, and she was quite good. Um, I've been asked to read Bart's citation. I know Bart all my life, and I found him to be a thorough gentleman. Anything he ever does, I can tell you, this has gone to God. I'll have to get Bart to sing, that's what I'll do. <laughs> Bart is popularly known as Bartolucci. I think that comes from being uh, one of the master painters of Limerick at one stage. He loves Italian opera and his favourite tenor is Luciana Pavarotti, hence the Bartolucci. <laughs> Bart is no mean tenor himself, I can tell you. He entertained the people of Limerick in the operas from 1960, 70 and 80. He played the leading parts in all the comedian, and I can tell you, he played them with great aplomb. I'm telling you, he's one of the finest entertainers Limerick has ever seen, and we're only discovering him today. <laughs> now, uh, his service to school by soccer, particularly Roxbury United Football Club. Bart is the recipient, and I can tell you a worthy one. I'm going to find my glasses now. Bart was a founder member and the driving force behind the hugely successful Roxbury United Football Club for the past number of years. He has been involved with soccer in the Kennedy Park area of Limerick since 1970. He works tirelessly for the benefit of the club and its members. After nearly five years of tireless, I'd say pestering letters and telephone calls, Bart was given the lease for the new pitch last year. He maintains the pitch on his ride-on tractor, dangerous at times, but always there. <laughs> he always has the pitch lined and in top class condition. Even Munster might be looking for a loan with one of the days <laughs> if we're thrown out of Thurman Park. Bart is at the pitch every day, organising activities in the community hall for the players. His aim is to provide for the youth and keep them out of trouble. Many of the players plying their trade with clubs all over the city were introduced to the game by Bart Dillon, and he has spent countless hours coaching the boys and girls in the skills of the game. Bart is revered by all the committee members and players of the club, and he has 100% support from everybody. His club is well respected in local circles and they admit that this is due to Bart's commitment over the years. He must be the fittest and the most active member of the club and seems to thrive in all this work. Bart has always been extremely helpful in the local school, the Galvone National School, providing the use of the pitch for the school's matches, training on the sports days. 
He's in contact, constant contact with the school in his ongoing efforts to encourage participation by the children. He's synonymous with soccer in the area and is a huge, huge asset to the community. For service to school boys soccer, <laughs> Bart Dillon is a deserving recipient of the 2005 Sports Service Award. community, the community games. And the winner for 2005 is John Dinage. And Mary O'Connor will read the citation. Chairman, CEO, special guest Ronnie Delaney, Burke family, O'Brien family, award recipients, all invited guests, friends and colleagues, I am indeed very honoured to have the opportunity of reading the citation for one of nature's gentlemen. John Dinage, affectionately known to all of us as Johnny. He has been actively involved in community games for many years. He's a founder, member of Rathkeel Community Games, and is the present treasurer of Limerick Community Games. He has held this post for many years and has been unopposed for this position. During this period, John initiated numerous new projects. Of these, of these John's pride and joy is the talent competition within community games in Limerick. This became so successful that it has been taken on board by national and is now a national competition for the 32 counties. John never tires. New ideas are top of his agenda. He is the main man behind the Sportsmanship Awards, and many of you here tonight would be aware of these. They were introduced a few years ago to Limerick Community Games. As a result, children who might never win a sporting medal found themselves on the podium with an award for participation. John's foresight in the early 1990s was to secure a headquarters for Limerick Community Games. After a lot of hard work, fundraising, etc., all organised again by the man himself, Limerick Community Games are proud to have their own fully paid for headquarters at Main Street, Rathkeel. And here's a plug for another great premises in Rathkeel. It's John's own menswear on the Main Street in Rathkeel. This shop has proven to be a, pin, a kindergarten for community games. Customers coming in and out with their children inquire off of John, where do we go? And John will always put them onto the right people. Community Games is not just all that John is about. He's put a huge voluntary effort in Rathkeel Red Cross, sheltered housing, community employment, community council, the Butterfly Club, and Chamber of Commerce. So, you will all agree, a busy man. This quite unassuming gentleman has to be one of the most valued people in Rathkeel and throughout the county. And tonight, John, I know, Rathkeel Community Games and Limerick Community Games join with us in saluting you. 
For service to sport, and in particular the Limerick Community Games, John Dinage is the most deserving winner of the 2005 Sports Service Award. Good luck, John. Testing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special award for a lifetime of service to soccer. And the award recipient is. Sean Lipper. And Sean O'Donovan will read the citation. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, fellow sports people. For a lifetime of service to soccer, and in particular, his club favourite Rangers, Sean Lepper is being awarded the 2005 Sports Service Award. Sean Lepper's family is synonymous with all that is good about sport in Limerick, as their contribution on a voluntary basis has been immense over a long period of time. His late brother Michael will be remembered for his heroics with Limerick AFC and his goal scoring speech with them. Oh, Michael also became mayor of this great city of ours. And while being mayor, he drove the train to the All-Ireland Final of 1973. Sean's association with Fairview Rangers goes back to 1955. 50 years of dedicated and unbroken service. Closing Fairview's history book in their golden jubilee of 1996, there is a tribute to Sean and it reads, a Fairview legend. Sean Lipper's influence on the Fairview, Fairview Rangers Club over a period of four decades has been enormous. His greatest hour is undoubtedly the winning of the FBI and Montreal Cups in 1964 65. Sorry. Revered and respected in local football circles, he still remains a father figure to many, to many. Sean's high standards are still in evidence in the club to the present. And that was 10 years ago. Sean's club Fairview will celebrate 60 years in football in 2006. And during that period, Sean has served on the committee as selector, Training, manager, hunt secretary, hunt treasurer, chairman, minor team selector and manager, school by committee and fundraiser. It is due to the caliber of people like Sean Lepper that favourite Fairview Rangers has Sorry. has become one of the leading junior clubs in Munster and Ireland. That their own magnificent club rooms and playing facilities to prove this, and also on the playing field they have many trophies over the years. But the winning of the API Junior Cup on seven occasions <coughs> is a milestone for the club. There is an in initial entry of approximately 750 teams annually in Ireland for this cup. So this is no mean feat. Sean never played soccer, and apart from our national games, in school with the CBS and St. Patrick's in his native parish. It is fair to say his role was totally off the field. He has been a very able administrator and the Trojan work he has given voluntary to the Fairview Club leaves no doubt he is an unsung hero of local soccer. 
The pledge he has given to his club over a long number of years has been amazing. It would be impossible to assess the amount of general work Sean has done for his beloved club. Situated in the fair green, the grounds and clubhouse are Sean's next door neighbour. He has done it all. Line pitches, transported players and gears in his own car. Cleaned out dressing rooms, took down goalposts, erected fences, and I could go on. I will leave it to your imagination what a true club man he is. He's one of those people all other clubs envy for the work he does. Never without a brush in his hand. He also looks after the shrine in the area. After a hectic weekend of matches and social activities. Who was there on Monday mornings to put the premises and general area back in pristine condition? When supplies come to the clubhouse on a regular basis, who is on a hand if nobody else is available due to their own commitments? An amateur in sport doing a professional job for the club he idolizes, Sean Lever. This is a small this is a small resume of Sean's contribution to soccer and Fairview Rangers. For a light of service to soccer, and in particular to his beloved Fairview Rangers, AFC, Sean Leeper is indeed a worthy recipient of a Sports Service Award for 2005. Ladies and gentlemen, athletics and community games is the next sporting area. And the award recipient in this area is Noel Morrissey. And Paddy O'Connell will read the citation. Uh, honoured guests, recipients, ladies and gentlemen. Noel Morrissey is one of those very select group of people. Uh, many internationals of every code remain involved in the sport after retirement, but very too few devote their time to children. For the past seven years, Noel has been one of these, giving her time to more than eight community games and the Mulder City Club. As a former uh, Holders athlete, Noel brings a wealth of experience uh, to all areas of athletics. In addition to this, she has an excellent uh, interpersonal skills, which is evident to her in her dealings with children, coaches, parents, and athletes to look up and respect her. As a fit person, she can sprint and jump to demonstrate the correct techniques. Uh, Noel uh, averages eight hours a week, so uh, that's 10,000. <laughs> Uh, children. Friday nights uh, and Sundays uh, for the Emerald and sun uh, Saturdays and Wednesdays with the community games. She regularly stays on uh, after a session has finished to deal with specific needs of individuals. Uh, this continues right through the season, uh, which often was summer season in the, of the community games and she makes herself available to officiate at the Limerick community games final. <coughs> what I do wonder is did she ever give you any information about her own colourful career, which unfortunately due to injury uh, may have been a lot longer? Did she tell any of you about a lucky pair of socks? <laughs> <laughs> she had these socks which she insisted on wearing at all competitions, irrespective of condition. <laughs> and uh, my informant uh, uh, from these days uh, Tell me, be able to disregard when there was, which was inevitable, there were many holes, so many holes that she couldn't know which was where she could put her feet. <laughs> she was also known uh, 
to sprinkle uh, holy water on their legs. Um, I think I'll stop shaking my breathe. <laughs> uh, she used to fly over the hole so well that farm athletes often asked could they avail of this miraculous potion, whichever it was. And on one occasion, she set uh, a new British all comers record for 200 uh, metre holes in her age groups. No, maybe it's because of this she became one of the very youngest to be uh, dope tested. Uh, one of the youngest. Uh, and uh, maybe she'll tell you herself, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, <laughs> as a Scottish friend of mine, or uh, another violent said, uh, how, uh, how we tour the lay in producing a specimen uh, caused. Uh, um, the manager, uh, the manager's brother, it was actually instrumental in the manager's brother not being uh, robbed. It seems what actually happened was uh, the manager was to meet his brother for the business near where the stadium was. He was delayed, he went and waited for him, and some crowd came along to break in while he was there. I could say a lot more than I've been told, but uh, she threatened me with legal action there earlier the <laughs> uh, So suffice it to say, Noel is the most worthy recipient of this very competent award. Gentlemen, we now come to another very important Limerick sport, rugby. And the 2005 uh, award recipient for rugby is Joe Sheehan. <laughs> and Tony Tyne will read the citation. Chairman, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, what a week it has been for Joe Sheehan. The wife winning winning streak, <laughs> Joe getting an award, and we believe she has a Euro lottery ticket, so all <laughs> looking very well. Joe, we'll all be touching off you for a bit of luck. <laughs> for a lifetime involvement in rugby, but particularly Richmond Rugby Club, Joe Sheehan has been honoured with a Sports Service Award for 2005. Joe played junior rugby with Richmond over four decades, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and at junior level until the age of 44. By 1990, Joe decided to take on the coaching of the underage teams. This involved not alone coaching and training, but also the organizing of Jersey Water, first aid kits, etc and Joe would always be stuck in the middle of the action. On the nights he is not training the young lads, Joe could be found watching the junior team training, sweeping out the dressing rooms or doing whatever odd jobs as required in the club. Richmond RFC went through a difficult phase some years ago with the trauma of two successive fires at their clubhouse and dressing rooms and subsequently vandalism and indiscriminate and illegal dumping of domestic rubbish discarding household electrical appliances, etc., which was previously under car park. Joe is a former president of the club, but unlike other people who achieve such high office, Joe continues to be a hands-on member of the club. <coughs> now in the new millennium, Joe's passion for the club can only be considered stronger than ever. During 2005, he helped organize the underage tour to Brussels. However, it is well known that Joe has another passion, and he is known as Joe the Boat Sheehan. <laughs> Joe has, utter, has the utmost respect for everybody within Richmond, RFC, and indeed other rugby clubs. 
and he is perceived to be a perfect gentleman and sportsman. For his lifetime membership of Richmond RFC, Joe Sheehan is receiving a sports award tonight for 2005. Congratulations, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the special awards. And the first one is the Jim Upton Media Award. In appreciation of the very special role that the media play in supporting and promoting sport in Limerick. So the winner of the Jim Upton M uh, Media Award this year, uh, for, for, for the year 2005, is Tony McMahon. And Leonard Burke will read the citation. Dear the Chairperson, Distinguished Guests, the Burke and O'Brien families, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Um, for services to sport for his beloved Bellinanti Rovers Football Club and for his involvement with the LDMC and for his passion for racing, but more importantly for the contribution he has made for sport over the radio airwaves for nearly 30 years, Tony McMahon has been honoured tonight with the second only Jim Upton Media Award for 2005. Now that's as much as the, as, as the script as you're going to get because um, this evening I'm deputising for Jim Upton, so I'm actually a sub here. Uh, Jim became a grandfather last evening and phoned me from Belfast and asked uh, would I mind taking a call from Mary Costello. He didn't say what it was about and uh, then hung up uh, without telling me that he had become, become a granddad. And uh, subsequently I found out and I rang him back and uh, he said he was delighted, but he wanted to pass on his good wishes to Tony, who recently became a granddad as well, and uh, who has been celebrating uh, lately uh, the christening of his granddaughter, Faye, and Paul and Neil were here tonight, and last weekend they, ha they had a very enjoyable function down in the uh, boat club. So uh, I just want to mention to my wife, Lorraine, that it's not a habit amongst the uh, sports team, and Jim Upton was a former member of our sports team, and indeed a former head of sport, so she can rest easy that I won't be a grandfather just yet, <laughs> anyway. Um, so another thing I should point out as well is that I'm uh, an acting head of sport. So if Aidan Carr is listening, Aidan is an acting head of sport, I know it as well. Uh, one of the things that has been done in the sports team over the years is that we've shared around the title of head of sport. And I can tell you that now rests with Mal Keevney. So if you have any complaints about the services that are, that are given on Limerick's Live 95 FM, I'll give you Mal's... Uh, home number, his mobile number, his email, <laughs> anything you want uh, when, when we're, we're finished. So Jim couldn't be here, as I say, but uh, uh, Jim did mention in the citation about how we came to be as a sports team. And indeed, tonight would be our first time back in the Perry Hotel as a team, with one of us getting an award since the heady days of Radio Limney, when John the Man Frawley brought us all here, uh, all the staff of Radio Limney as it was, gave us a plaque that he had purchased from JJ, JJ Kennelly's for about, around about 25 pence each with uh, a crossbones and skull on it to signify that we were pirates. And uh, having, having done that then, I think he charged a tenner a head to over a thousand people to come and, come and watch it. And uh, it was a very enjoyable evening. Um, I'm delighted to have a microphone in my hand such as this because it gives me an opportunity to explain to you how Tony got involved 
uh, in sports broadcasting. I should mention that uh, he asked me tonight not to mention Valenanti Rovers because of an infamous episode in Germany when he toured with them in the early 70s. And also not to mention racing because he's in league with the bookmakers and has been for a long time <laughs> in Limerick uh, in, in relation to that. But uh, Tony was first handed a microphone uh, down in the basement of Big L in 1978 by the late uh, Tommy Hines. He was uh, advised by Tommy that he was going to start as a soccer correspondent. And Tommy asked him, what's happening this weekend, Tony? Handed him the mic, left the basement, and Tony was left all alone to speak for 15 minutes in an empty room. And he never looked back uh, from that. Uh, indeed, uh, I just wondered this evening, you think of health and safety, and you enter, en enter uh, the close surrounds of the Perry Hotel, such as it is now, and you think of some of the places that uh, the sports team of uh, Limerick Radio, I, I would call it, uh, firstly, and uh, today of Limerick's Live 95 FM, uh, set out, because it was very humble beginnings, and there are people here tonight who would be very familiar with that, and I suppose that would include uh, the chair of the City Sports Partnership, Dave Mahidi, who would remember the days when we were in the likes of Squire Maguire's, uh, when people like Jerry McLaughlin were brought up uh, brought up the stairs that was about to fall apart. Tony Ward was actually lifted up the stairs uh, by Lendon Ean and uh, John Frawley had some interesting areas uh, when somebody had to relieve themselves and I, I won't go into that in, in, in too much detail. But it was a place where, where, uh, where as I say, health and safety was non est to say, say the least. It was a time as well when uh, there was a lot of ambition amongst, amongst the sports team in terms of uh, dealing with other competitors in, in the media world. And uh, we were always looking for a scoop, and so much so that we probably spent a lot of time in pubs uh, in, the, in those uh, formative days. But we, we, we copped ourselves on, and uh, under Tony's leadership for quite a period, uh, we moved from radio station to radio station. Tony often says we managed to close a few down as well because we contributed to the likes of Century Radio when it was on the go and Radio Ireland as well, ever so briefly, but eventually they were replaced by the likes of, of Today FM. Now, um, in that period, into the 80s uh, in Limerick, there was a famous uh, inter-club sports quiz that got the support of Guinness. It was fronted by Jim Upton in so much as he was the MC for the evenings and uh, Jim uh, was always one to uh, put the best foot forward and he put Tony forward as, as quiz master and uh, every night uh, that we were out we, we went to packed houses uh, initially to club houses of the various sporting clubs and uh, afterwards to a number of public houses and uh, Tony would be asking such difficult questions as who won the 1500 metres at the 1956 Olympics was it Ronnie Long or Ronnie Delaney <laughs> and uh, you know Difficult uh, times like that. And we're delighted, and Tony is delighted as well, the chorus are here this evening, because uh, the nearest that Tony became to becoming a millionaire uh, came in the period when the All-Ireland League in rugby was huge in Limerick. And Tony and Lendon Ean did a commentary on a game at Thoman Park that involved Gary Owen and Shannon, a crucial game in the All-Ireland League. Keith Wood was playing with Gary Owen at the time. Shannon were a, big, were a big threat to Gary Owen, but Gary Owen were the dominant team. Richard Wallace played on the right wing uh, for Gary Owen at the time. RTE were on strike, and Chorus, who are here this evening, uh, ca carried the game. And the commentators were Lendon Ean and Tony McMahon. Gary Owen won the match for the record by 20 points to 9. But more importantly, the only videotape of the game was held locally by Lendon Ean and Tony McMahon. One afternoon in the build-up to an English-Irish international uh, in the Five Nations, as it was then, uh, there was a phone call to uh, Tony to know would he and Len be interested in making some serious money with the uh, videotape. And they were summoned to uh, Gary Owen Rugby Football Club by uh, Frank Hogan, the then president, and were advised that the BBC were sitting in a corner and were willing to offer them any kind of money to get some footage of Richard Wallace as they wanted to do a contrast between, or a comparison between Richard Wallace as, uh, as a pilot from Kuna and taking lessons and Rory Underwood who at the time was in the RAF. So um, Frank Hogan suggested to them that they could name their price as they headed, uh, headed along uh, down in, into the clubhouse in Dura Doyle. And after uh, 25 minutes of discussion with the uh, BBC producer, 
they emerged with the BBC standard fee of £50, which to this day remains unpaid. So uh, uh, that, that was the closest uh, that they came to success. But we're taking them to court. Um, Tony was, was, was excellent at quizzes, and indeed was a good tipster on radio, an excellent tipster, and at times uh, took uh, the bookies to the cleaners. And recently, Limerick's Live 95 FM was 36 hours ahead of the nation when it announced that Steve Staunton would be the next Republic of Ireland manager and Sir Bobby Robson would be his assistant. And it all came because Tony was at home one evening and he figured it out. He was listening to a Paul Simon uh, record about 50, uh, 50 ways to leave your lover and he came up with slip out the back jack, making no plans stand, no need to be coy Roy, just set yourself free. Hop on the bus Gus, as in Gus Hiddick, don't need to discuss much, drop off the keys Lee, as in Carsley, and set yourself free. He says to me it's got to be Stan Staunton and uh, off we went and uh, we, we backed him. But on a more serious note at the betting side, Tony every year at Grand National time always thought of the community and tonight's awards are very much about the community and the excellent work everybody does in the community. And a couple of years back, as he did every year with the Banbury organisation, he uh, got a free bet in the region of 500 euro. Rather than invest the 500 euro uh, to win in a, as difficult a race as the entry Grand National, Tony opted to have 250 euro each way on a horse called Monty's Pass at 18 to one. It was an aid of a young girl from Corbley who a year earlier had bravely succumbed to uh, the illness that is cystic fibrosis and had passed away. And a crusade had been set up called Kira's Crusade. The girl was Kira Kelleher. And Tony tipped that winner to the whole of Limerick, but more importantly, raised substantial money as he invested the 250 euro each way at 18 to one on Monty's Pass. And that's the kind of, kind of guy he was. Um, he was always trying to do something for the community, be it with his beloved Balananti, beloved Balananti Rovers, be it with uh, Limerick's Live 95 FM, Radio Limney, Big L, or whatever. He always put Limerick first, and he continues to do so. It's been a pleasure to listen to uh, Tony over the airwaves of sport over almost 30 years. And uh, he started off when the All Blacks uh, were here in 1978. Uh, he lasted a bit longer than most guys that played that day. If you listen to him late at night, he'll tell you he played himself. But uh, we, the, uh, the Limerick uh, Service to Sports Awards Committee, uh, are honouring Tony tonight with the Jim Upton Media Award for 2005. It's richly deserved. And as I said earlier, Jim wishes to pass on and be associated uh, with this award in a very sincere way. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jim Upton Media Award for 2005 goes to Tony McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Jerry Bark Special Award. And this award is being made posthumously to Tim O'Brien. And I'll call on Mary Costello to come to the microphone now. Breed the Deedigan is vain in telling us that she has to wear glasses. Breed that when you get to my age, I have two pairs and I still can't see. And now the podium is gone as well. Um, it gives me great pleasure to read the Jerry Bork Special Award. I had worked with Jerry for 30 years, uh, both with work and sport. And it is an honour, it is with honour and pride, but sincere sympathy, that we present the posthumous Jerry Bork Special Award in the memory of the late Tim. Firstly, I welcome Anna, Kieran, Neil and Aileen, and thank them for allowing us to present 
what I believe is the first of many awards which will be presented in memory of the late Tim. I was somewhat disappointed when Anna told me that Liam could not be here tonight, as I, and I presume most of the ladies in the hall, were looking forward to meeting the Emmerdale star. However, on reflection of the magnificent homily Liam gave at Tim's funeral, I suppose I was relieved that he would not be listening to my poor effort at a citation about his dad, knowing he, he could do a far superior job than I. Uh, Tim will be remembered by all those who had the privilege of knowing him, whether it was in the world of business, sport, or indeed the arts, where he left an indelible impact, and which we believe the enormity of his magnificent contribution will only become apparent in the years to come. Tim started working with Limit Shoe Company, then went to work with Neodata, where he became vice president, uh, before branching out to establish O'Brien Communications, his own company. When the sports advisory body was set up in 1979, Tim assisted with and participated in many of our promotions. Subsequently, when the concept of the Treaty 300 was mooted for 1991, a committee was formed in 1988, and not 78 as it says in the program, um, and all meetings were held in Tim's offices during this three-year pe leading period. We prepared a very comprehensive program, and as Tim was a keen and talented sports person, he was immersed in every project, making it one of the most successful of the 10 Treaty 300 committees set up under the sports funders under the chairmanship of Ronnie Long. Then at the start of the millennium, sports partnerships were established around the country, and we've heard a lot about them tonight, with initially eight local sports partnerships formed, North Tipperary, Clare, Fingal, Sligo, Donegal, Roscommon, and Leash. The Limerick Task, for, task Group uh, was delayed as they had hoped to incorporate both city and county, but unfortunately this was impossible at the time. Subsequently, it was agreed nationally to roll out the partnerships to other areas, and a task force was established in Limerick with Tim again as facilitator, and the Limerick City Sports Partnership was born. It was Tim's advice that we should piggyback on the experience of these eight partnerships and he then set out on a mission with enthusiasm and a belief that Limerick should be to the future in Irish sport and work tirelessly to achieve this. A board of directors was established to include representatives of a wide range of businesses and sporting organisations. Public meetings were held, and most, some of us were at a lot of them, and uh, the first city sports partnership board took place here in what was then the Glenfinch Hotel on Monday the 2nd of September 2002 and uh, the chairman of the night was Tim. At the first meeting, a budget of 115, I, I'm not sure whether it's uh, 115,000, uh, whether it's pounds or euros now, was agreed, and the imminent appointment of the new sports coordinator, Ms. Elaine O'Connor, was approved, noting she'd take up duty on the 11th of November. And I wrote this earlier today, for those of you who have not yet seen the issue seven of the Limerick City Sports Partnership newsletter, there is a beautiful tribute to Tim for his professional expertise in delivering one of the best partnerships in Ireland, and I think that was written by Dave. Frank Collins wrote a tribute to Tim in Business Limerick in, in November 2005, describing Tim as, in business, Tim was the helping hand and gave guidance freely without personal gain. He had experience far greater than his years and a sense of humor which could put a shine on the most serious of situations. Limerick has lost a man with vision a great ambassador, a tireless worker for the city, and a great friend. Tim was also a central figure in the Mar Marketing Institute for many years, Limerick Junior Chamber, and Adult School Reach Parents Association, as well as being a director of the Board of Our Island Theatre. At the time of his death, he was actively looking uh, to secure a sponsor for these <coughs> service to sports awards, which he attempted on many occasions, attended on many occasions, and was fully supportive of the Unsung Heroes concept and it is only right that we are honouring him tonight on the 23rd Sports Service Awards function. In recent days, as you heard already, the Limerick Sports Partnership has acquired funding for this event from the Paul Partnership under the Community Development Programme. <coughs> and while Tim was not here in spirit, I have no doubt but his intervention had some impact on the decision. Tim's immense, immense passion, the last time I was speaking to him, was for local sport and inspired his concept of sporting Limerick all local sports joined together under the one sporting banner. He was thrilled when the GAA agreed to incorporate the logo on their sports gear. This was the start of a great vision to promote Limerick as the sports capital of Ireland. 
which will now be a testament to his memory for his contribution to Limerick's board. I will now call on Captain Michael Egan to play a slow air called Limerick's Lamentation as a tribute to Tim. Uh, ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to call on Anne Burke to present the Jerry Burke Trophy to Kieran O'Brien. Ceremony, I will be asking Captain Michael Egan to lead all of the award recipients out of the room for a photograph. But in the meantime, we have another special award, this time a surprise award. And I now call on Tony Delocry to read the citation for Limerick's latest world champion, Captain Michael Egan. Ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests and recipients, the year the important ones, uh, welcome here tonight. Captain Michael Leighton has been a member of the Limerick City Sports Advisory Body a number of years. Initially he represented the Army, he was based in Sassfield Barracks and subsequently he entertained us with his band playing the, bike, the bagpipes for many years at all these events. I know Mick since the early 70s and 80s when I was in the army in Southwood Barracks, still am. But that time I used to have to share the gym with Michael. I'd be down on one end of the gym, punching a bay. And Mick was at the other end, practicing the pipes. And you don't know how annoying that was. <laughs> um, when, when boxers all over the country were listening to Rocky and well, jazz, I was listening to Florida Scotland and <laughs> Amazing Grace now. Anyway. It wasn't, it wasn't wasted on him. Uh, in August last year in Glasgow, Michael went to, to take part in the World Championships. He competed in five separate sections, having to submit three tunes in each section. And out of 20 
competitors from all over the world, including Scotland, and I say Scotland because they have a very strong piping tradition. He came out on top. No mean achievement. Um, out, outside of the fact that he got presented with a shield to say that he was a world champion, he also won a prize to take part in a very prestigious uh, Metro Championships in New York on the 18th of February. Um, the reason he won this now is because of hard work and dedication. And that the word dedication means something to everyone here tonight, everyone that got in the world. And I remember one time in South Hill Boxing Club, I was coaching the kids, and I see a young lad down in the corner and he was bluffing, or dodging, whatever you want to call it. So I called him up and I said, here, there's a fiver. Go down there to Tesco's and get me a uh, five pounds worth of um, dedication. So he was just walking away and then he said, you can't buy dedication. I said, you're right. So get back over there now and put a bit of effort into it. <laughs> so I was very pleased with myself when I went home that night thinking about, Jesus, that was a great idea to come up with. And then it hit me. Jesus, the little whore, he never gave me back my five. <laughs> but anyway. Getting back to Michael. Michael started playing with CBS uh, Point Band in Sexton Street. So I assume he was in school at the time. He went down then to Limerick City Point Band, who is with now at the moment. And for 20 years while he was in the army, he played uh, for the army, for the bands and the parades and everything else. And he played overseas while he was serving in Lebanon. Now for a soldier, a point band is very important when you're away from home. Because if you get a good pipe band out in front of you and you're marching, and you're marching behind him, Jesus will take on the Russians, do you know? <laughs> so, we never did, Mike, but it wasn't down to your plane. <laughs> we're, we're a neutral country. <laughs> anyway, last year Michael was invited by the Irish Harp Institute to join, him, to join them on a three-week tour of Germany. They played all over Germany in top-class venues with many notable stars, and their names are in German, so I'm not going to read them. <laughs> he was also invited by the director of the Irish Music Centre, the Uni University of Limerick, Professor Michael O'Sullivan, to teach the pipes there, and it is totally enjoying the side of his career. So, well done, Mike. Now, as we said, behind every good man is a good woman. So, all I'm going to say on that score is, Mary calls the tunes and Mike plays them. <laughs> at, the, at the moment, at this moment in time now, in his spare time, Michael trains the young kids in the Limerick City Pipe Band. He's also been re-elected as vice chairman to the Irish Pipe Band Association. And just to finish up now, I'm going to ask you, what has Michael Legan and Richard Gere got in common? Right, I'll tell you. It's, it's not the looks anyway, Michael. But don't worry about that, because he can't play the bagpipes. <laughs> right? At one time, he played an officer and a gentleman. But since I've known you, you are an officer and a gentleman. So for his services to sport, and for his work in Limerick with the bagpipes, and also, for being a world champion, which we have very few of, Captain Moise Legan is a very worthy recipient. Gentlemen, uh, to finish up, while Michael, while Michael is getting his bagpipes ready to play out the winners uh, for a formal photograph, I would just like, on behalf of the organisers, 
and better. My mic is getting these bagpipes ready to uh, lead out the recipients, the award recipients, for a formal photograph. Um, I would just like, on behalf of the organising committee tonight, to thank you all here present for your contribution to sport and for helping to make tonight a great night. The organising committee would like to say a special thanks to the Limerick Sports Partnership, uh, to the Paul Partnership, City of Limerick BEC for their special contribution, and a very special thank you to the media who are great supporters of this award, to Live 95 FM, to the Limerick Leader and to the Limerick Post. Thank you very much again for your support. Finally, just like to thank our guests again and ask the recipients to follow the, the band leader for the photograph. And meantime, um, the floor here will be prepared for the rest of the night's activities, uh, a bit of dancing and fun and whatever else. And thank you all again and thank you very much to the hotel who have provided such a very nice meal and have provided such wonderful support uh, and management tonight. Thank you all very much.